Hey guys, welcome back to our SAP Cloud Application Programming Model Tutorial Series. In the previous episodes, we built a foundational CAPM application and implemented CRUD operations using REST APIs. If you haven't watched those yet, I recommend checking them out to get up to the speed. In this third part, we will enhance our application by integrating a persistent SQLite database. By default, CAPM uses an in-memory database which, while useful for testing, don't retain data between sessions. We will configure our application to use a file-based SQLite database, ensuring data persistence across restart. Additionally, we will explore how to update our database schema without losing existing data by enabling automatic schema evolution. Let's dive in. First of all, let's check our data is persistent or not. For that, start our CAPM application by using the command cdswatch and insert a data using our REST API. Let's send this data and you can see our data is inserted successfully. List out all our data using the GET request and find the newly inserted data here. You can find the newly inserted data that is Oliver2 which is listed when we use the get method. Now let's stop this CDS watch command and rerun the CDS watch again so that we can understand whether our DB is persistent or not as of now. So after restart if I use the get command and if I see the results you cannot find the newly inserted data because our database is not persistent right now. By default, CAPM applications utilize an in-memory database. If you use the CDS deploy command, then you can see that it is using an in-memory database only. This means that all data is stored in RAM and is lost once the application stops. To switch from an in-memory database to a persistent file-based SQLite database, we need to modify our project's configuration. Let's open the package.json file and add the following configuration under the CDS section. In this configuration, kind specifies the type of database. In our case, it's SQLite. Here we should type credentials which defines the path to the SQLite database file. Here we are specifying that our database file will be located at db slash mybookshop.sqlite. After saving these changes, our application is set to use a persistent SQLite database stored in the specified file. With our configuration updated, we need to deploy our database schema to the new SQLite database file using the command CDS deploy. This command will create the mybookshop.sqlite file in the DB directory and generate the tables and views based on our CDS model. Now let's check the persistence of our application by using the CDS watch command. Let's go to our test.http file and list out all the books which we have right now and which doesn't contain Oliver now. Now send the Oliver2 book to the database and use the get method again to see the output. Now you can see that Oliver2 is successfully inserted to our database and we need to check our persistence so that we should stop this CDS watch and restart it again by typing the same command. Now we have restarted our server. Next check the persistence by sending this get command again and if you scroll down you can see Oliver2 is listed here and that confirms our database is persistent right now. You can also see that a new file named mybookshop.sqlite is added under the db folder which is nothing but our database. As our application evolves, we may need to update the database schema such as adding new fields or tables. 
To ensure these changes are applied without losing existing data, we can enable automatic schema evolution. Currently, if we redeploy the schema, we will lose all our data and updates with the new schema. Let's test this out by adding a new field to an existing entity in our CDS model. Let the new field be location having a data type string. And using the command CDS deploy for redeploying our database schema. Now let's go to the test.http file and check the new schema. Before that don't forget to use the CDS watch command to start our server. Now let's go and check this again. Now you can see that a new field called location is added to our database schema having null as the default value. But the newly inserted book called Oliver 2 got erased from the database. Let's solve this issue by enabling automatic schema evolution in our package.json file. By setting schema evolution to auto, CAPM will automatically apply necessary schema changes during deployment without dropping existing tables, thus preserving your data. After saving these changes, redeploy the schema using the CDS deploy command. But this will end up in an error. This is because we have an existing mybookshop.sql file without schema evolution. All we have to do is to delete the existing SQLite file and deploy again. Now use the command CDS deploy to deploy it again with the schema evolution. The new SQLite file is created and let's test the schema evolution feature by adding a new data Oliver 2. For this, go to the test.http file and list out all our books right now and you can see no Oliver 2 file is listed there so that we can send this request again to insert new Oliver 2 file. The new data Oliver 2 is inserted to the database. Now let's test schema evolution by adding a new field to an existing entity in our CDS model. Let's add genre of type string. After saving the changes, redeploy the database schema by running CDS deploy. CAPM will dictate the schema change and apply them to the existing database without dropping the books table, thereby preserving the existing data. To verify that the new field has been added without data loss, you can use the get command in Rust API. You will see that the genre column has been added and existing data remains intact. In this session, we have successfully configured our SAP CAPM application to use a persistent SQLite database, ensuring data is retained across application restarts. We have also enabled automatic schema evolution to update our database schema without losing existing data. These enhancements are crucial for developing robust data-driven applications. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe and leave your comments below. Stay tuned for the next part of our series where we will explore more advanced features of SAP CAPM. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.